In this video, we're going to look at how to draw 3D Lewis structures for compounds that contain more than just bonding groups. And we can see a few easy patterns that we can identify in the table to the right. If we first take a look at an AX3 compound, for example, let's say that the compound is not actually AX3, but is in fact AX2E, meaning two bonding groups and one lone pair instead. Well, in order to go from AX3 to AX2E, all that we need to do is get rid of one of the bonding groups and substitute that with a lone pair, which we can see indicated here. The pattern that we can notice here is that if you measure the angle between each of the two bonds and the lone pair and between the two bonds themselves, we see that these bond angles remain very close to 120 degrees, which is the angle that we found in the AX3 compound. We'll discuss later why this angle isn't exactly 120 degrees, but it again remains very close. Using this idea, if we understand that all of these structures here on the right end of the table simply are derived from where we replace a bond, at least one bond within the AX3, AX4, AX5, or AX6 structure with at least one lone pair, or more than one lone pair, the geometry becomes fairly predictable. This is easier to understand when we actually take a look at an example. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the structure of CH4 with two similar structures in terms of geometry. So we know that CH4 is an AX4 molecule because the central atom carbon has no lone pairs and four single bonds. And from the previous video, we know that all of the angles between each of the hydrogens is identical and forms an angle of 109.5 degrees. Now, what we can do, let's say that we're dealing with, instead of an AX4 molecule, let's say we're dealing with an AX3 E molecule. Well, basically that model would have a very similar geometry, only instead of one of the hydrogens, as in CH4, there would be a lone pair instead. If we were dealing with a molecule that was AX2E2, which means the central atom has two bonding groups and two lone pairs, we could predict the geometry of that by removing a second hydrogen and substituting it with a lone pair like this. Now let's take a look at NH3 and water to see how this is true. So if we go through the process of drawing the 2D Lewis structure, we know that N, N nitrogen, contains five valence electrons and hydrogen has one, which means we have a total of eight valence electrons to work with. Nitrogen obviously goes in the middle because hydrogen can only make one bond. So we put the three hydrogens around nitrogen like so and connect with single bonds. Two electrons per single bond times three bonds is two, four, six electrons. And the two remaining electrons we put on nitrogen to put nitrogen's lone pair back, and that gives us zero electrons. If we find what the AXE notation is, we know that nitrogen is our A, our central atom. Nitrogen has three hydrogens attached to it, all single bonds, so this would be AX3, but for the first time we see a lone pair which makes nitrogen AX3E1 or simply AX3E. Now once again, as we've discussed with the structure of an AX4 molecule, the geometry of an AX3E molecule would look relatively similar but instead of drawing four single bonds like this, we would substitute one of those single bonds for a lone pair. So let's draw nitrogen here and let's assume that its lone pair here is flat, is planar, so we don't need to worry about the angle. Let's assume that this hydrogen here is also flat and just like with the AX4 molecule, the first hydrogen, this hydrogen here, we can draw pointing forward and this hydrogen here, just like in the AX4 molecule, we can draw pointing backward and that means that all of the angles, the angles between the bonds and the lone pair and between the bonds and the other bonds are all relatively similar.
Likewise, we can do the same thing when constructing the 3D structure of water. So if we draw the 2D Lewis structure, I don't think I really need to bother because I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to draw the 2D Lewis structure of water right now. Uh, if not, there it is. If we find out what water's AXE notation is, again, oxygen is the central atom, our A. It's connected to two hydrogens, which means AX2. But unlike ammonia, water has two lone pairs, which means that this would be AX2E2. Now, just as with NH3, if we wanted to draw the 3D structure of water, we can start with the 3D structure of an AX4 molecule, but cross out two of the hydrogens and substitute them with lone pairs. So if we were to do that and keep the geometry the same, here's one lone pair and here's the other lone pair, and we're going to assume that these lone pairs are planar so that we don't need to draw uh, any weird angles, and then we see this hydrogen here can take the place of this hydrogen here so that it points forward, and our second hydrogen can point backward like this. And once again, we see if we measure the angles between bonds and the angles between the lone pairs and the individual bonds, we see that they are similar, if not identical, to the AX4 geometry. For security's sake, we can build these molecules in our molecular structures program. So let's first build NH3. Let's add three single bonded atoms with one lone pair. And if we position the lone pair so that it points up but stays flat, and this hydrogen here points flat as well, we see that we have one hydrogen pointing forward and one pointing backward, exactly as our drawing depicted. Next, let's see whether water also assumes what we predict. Let's get rid of one of the bonds and let's replace it with a lone pair. And if we do that, let's move our molecule to the same orientation as ours. And again, if we orient our molecule like this, we see that this lone pair points up and stays flat. This lone pair points down to the left and stays flat. We have one hydrogen pointing behind the molecule and one pointing in front of the molecule. And in both cases, with water and ammonia, this geometry is exactly as we predict. There is one more thing to talk about before we and this video, and that is why is the bond angle between different atoms with or the atoms that are bonded to the central atom different than the bond angle that forms between a bonding pair and a lone pair. So we can see in from these three structures here that the bond angles are not completely identical even if the geometry is similar. Well the answer as we can see from the structure of water and ammonia has to do with lone pairs. Now, if we consider how electrons work, uh, number one, electrons are always going to be moving, including the electrons within a bond. However, the electrons within a bond are restricted in terms of how they can move. They need to be moving in between the two atoms that they join together, whereas a lone pair can basically move anywhere in the vicinity of the central atom because they are not shared between the central atom and one of the surrounding atoms. Therefore, lone pairs can move more freely than bonding pairs, which are the electrons found in bonds. Now, since electrons naturally repel away from each other, that's the whole point of Vesper theory, because the lone pairs have a greater freedom of movement than bonding pairs do, when the lone pairs move this way, for example, that repulsion force of the lone pair is going to push the electrons in bonding pairs closer together and farther away from the lone pair, which is why this bond angle is smaller than the one that exists in an AX4 molecule that has no lone pairs. And likewise, when you have two lone pairs, because both of these lone pairs have more freedom of movement than electrons within a bond, they're going to move farther out, which means each lone pair 
is going to create even more repulsive force to push the electrons in the bond away from the lone pair and closer to each other, and therefore the bond angle gets even smaller. So in summary, because lone pairs have more freedom of motion than bonding pairs do, they have a stronger repulsive force, which affects the bonds more than electrons in a bonding pair would, and therefore pushes the bonding pair atoms closer together, which again are the atoms that are joined to the central atom like this. And for that reason, even though the geometry is similar, the bond angles that exist in compounds with lone pairs will never be 100% identical to a compound that only contains bonding pairs. And with that, that basically covers all of the content that we have to talk about in terms of drawing 3D Lewis structures. The rest remains up to you to discover the bond angles, the structure names, and the general geometry that exists for all of the different combinations of bonding groups and lone pairs.